At KVGC News Time, now seven minutes after the hour, time for a look at the news for a Tuesday. It's the 25th day of February for 2020. In the news today, officials from both Amador County and the Buena Vista Tribe of Miwok Indians conducted their quarterly meeting last night to discuss issues with the Harris Northern California Casino and its impact on the community. CHP, Sheriff, and CAL FIRE officials each gave brief reports on their respective departments and their operations. A few remaining traffic issues were raised by residents, such as drivers not respecting stop signs or speed limits. One remaining area of contention is the annual community fund, which totals $1 million each year donated by the tribe as part of the mitigation for the casino and spent at the direction of the Board of Supervisors. For three years, the money has been budgeted for road repairs in the Buena Vista area, but an increasing number of voices, including the tribe itself, are urging the money be spent now on different projects. Supervisor Pat Crew, who chaired the meeting, proposed that the Board of Supervisors would consider a public input process on how the community fund would be spent. Suggestions have ranged from pedestrian improvements in the city of Ione, to new school recreation equipment, to the construction of a new park near the Oaks Mobile Home Park. And the Amador Sheriff's Office released an update late yesterday into the shooting death of Philip Haney. According to Under Sheriff Gary Redman, a forensic autopsy has been scheduled to be performed by forensic pathologists from the Sacramento County Coroner's Office, and the Amador County Sheriff's Office has reached out to the Federal Bureau of Investigation to assist in analyzing documents, phone records, and a laptop that were recovered from the scene and at Haney's RV. The Sheriff's Office is also in possession of a vehicle, the firearm located at the scene, and Haney's RV. Amador investigators conducted a neighborhood canvas and interviewed Haney's RV Park neighbors along with checking key areas for any video surveillance. Now, Redmond goes on to say that, quote, unfortunately, there was misinformation immediately being put out that Haney's death was a suicide. This is not the case, and that any final determination as to the cause and manner of Haney's death would be extremely premature and inappropriate at this time. No determination will be made until all evidence is examined and analyzed. You'll recall last Friday, Haney's body was located in the park and ride open area immediately adjacent to Highway 16 near Highway 124. The investigation is ongoing. And the public's responsibility over outdoor burn activities is of concern to local fire agencies. Over the past few days, CAL FIRE crews have responded to several fires. Two of the fires resulted in a citation. One was an escaped debris burn in the West Point area that scorched two acres and burned an unoccupied structure. The other was an escaped campfire. According to CAL FIRE, the fires added to the state's statistics showing more fire incidents this year than the five-year average for the same time frame. CAL FIRE would like to remind listeners of the lack of rain and the predictions which indicate a continued warm and drying pattern. So if you choose to burn outdoors, do so safely. And remember, be a good neighbor. Don't allow a controlled burn to escape or to smolder. And speaking of smoke, smoke will be visible in the Highway 4 corridor this week due to Cal Fire burning activities. According to officials, the agency, in cooperation with Sierra Pacific Industries, has slated a prescribed burn on the South Park Vegetation Management Plan near the southern boundary of Big Tree State Park. The actual location of the burn area is east of Arnold, and planned times for burning, as conditions allow, are today beginning at 9 a.m. through the day on Thursday, with burning primarily being conducted during daylight hours. However, some fire activity may be visible at night, and smoke will be present for several days afterwards. CAL FIRE officials are asking folks to be aware of these planned activities and not to call in to report them as a wildfire. And, of course, smoke will be visible through portions of Amador County as we look over to the Big Trees area. 
Well, PG&E again is warning residents of Amador and Calaveras counties of scammers claiming to be from the utility. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. According to spokesperson Brandy Merlot, any Pacific Gas and Electric Company customer receiving calls from someone claiming to represent PG&E and requesting your personal information and payment on past due balances or is trying to sell you a product or service, just hang up. Merlot says be aware that scammers can disguise their true phone numbers or simply claim to be from PG&E's billing department requesting payment. According to Merlot, PG&E takes security seriously and will actively work with law enforcement to help stop any scam that's victimizing customers. If you have received such a call, you can report it immediately by calling PG&E at 1-800-743-5000. And finally, this morning, tryouts are this Sunday for the Motherload Miners. Any boy between the age of 3rd and 8th grade will have the opportunity to join this competitive traveling basketball team. Practices are twice a week with season play going through May. Tryouts begin on Sunday, the 1st, at the Argonaut Gym. 3rd to 6th graders tryouts run from 2 to 3.30. 7th and 8th graders will Begin afterwards, 3.30 to 5. More information can be found on the Motherload Miners Facebook page. And that's a look at local news on a gold country. Tuesday morning from the KVGC News Center, I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather, 24 hours a day to visit our website at kvgcradio.com.